I've been here, uh, this is my fifth term, nine years. Uh, I'm on the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, I'm on VA Committee, and I'm the Chairman of the, uh, the Veteran Affairs Committee um, from deep Southern Illinois. Um, represent the bottom one third of the state of Illinois, grew up in a family trucking business. Uh, so that's with this issue, why it is important. So, And tell me, what was that like for you growing up in the trucking business? Well, um, it was just what we knew. My grandfather started the business in 1933. Uh, I grew up uh, driving my first truck across the lot at nine years old and uh, drove my first inloader through the side of the new garage at about six. Uh, but uh, I never not had a tractor trailer license. I uh, came, was actively involved in the business and went off to the Marine Corps, came home from the Marine Corps and ran that business for 10 years. My And then I left it uh, both for firefighting and for politics. And my brother and my cousin run that business today. The trucking industry, you know, this, it holds a, a special place in your heart because you have such personal ties to it. You bet. I know that in March, you introduced legislation on funding for safe truck trucking. So. What change do you think? You know, we're talking specifically about more parking spaces for truckers. Sure, sure. What, Let me what tell you, change, I'm carried, like, what change I, do you think is what change do you think is needed in the industry? Well, if if it's not just my district, it's across the nation. If you drive the interstates of this nation and you get out on the interstate, you realize that trucks are not only par parking in the rest areas or the truck stops. They're parking on the off ramps. They're parking on the on ramps. They're parking along the shoulder because going into the rest areas because there's not enough spots. Actually, a study was done in 2001 that they knew there was not enough spots with the growing industry the way it is. And not only that, now since the electronic log books have been put in place and there is a, a it doesn't allow for a lot of, um, uh, of common sense. It has to do with the computer telling you, you've got to shut down or you're going to be charged. OK, so you spend it, it's reported that drivers right now spend about 45 minutes a day of their normal work day searching for a parking spot to try to get their hour, get off the top of truck, get off in time for the hours of service. Now, what the bill does, and I've carried it for many years, but we almost got through last session. That's why it was reintroduced in March. It actually provides mon money directly to uh, the states or the share or stock. The, 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 the shareholders that would be interested in doing this to create more truck parking stalls, spot, spots, so that we can make it safer on the highway. Now, let me explain, let me explain to you that not only is it unsafe for the commercial driver, it's unsafe for all of us who would be driving our cars, our pickup trucks, our, 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 if we're on vacation and all the people are moving campers and all of that thing that do not fall under the rules because we don't have to require, we're not required to shut down, we're tired. And therefore, having all of these vehicles parked in spots where you're coming on or off or even where you're just going down the interstate is a danger not only to the commercial driver, but also to the to the private driver. And a good example of that was just earlier this last month. Uh, and, and, and if we don't get this done, it comes with consequences. Because earlier this last month, a Greyhound traveling from Indianapolis to St. Louis uh, veered into the sh onto the shoulder in the off-ramp at, at uh, Madison County, Illinois, right at a, near a rest area. A park just on the off ramp, there were three tractor trailers, uh, drivers lined up, taking their break and rest, but they were on the shoulder. Well, the bus hit them. It killed three passengers. It are you injured. talking about the July? Are you talking about the July twelfth incident? Yes. Yes. Okay, because you said last month, so you mean yeah, this month? This month, just a few okay. weeks ago. Yeah. Right. So, so that that there were three passengers on the bus killed. There were over a dozen injured. Had my bill passed several years ago, this could have been one situation that may not have occurred. I don't know that for sure, but I know if these drivers had someplace other than that shoulder to park, guess where they'd be parking? Someplace other than that shoulder. And also they wouldn't be driving exhausted because they can't find parking, right? I mean, well, true, but, but these trucks were already stopped. The, the, we don't know really. Um, whether the bus driver was driving exhausted or not, that's still under investigation. So we're waiting on the report back of exactly how the incident occurred. The drivers in the trucks were not injured. It was the passengers in the bus that were injured. 
and kill. Just to be clear, in the Greyhound, in, in that Greyhound case, the driver swerved to the side. The question is, do you want to hit an 80,000 pound truck or do you want to, if your driver falls asleep, would you prefer to ride out through a field? So the parking would have actually made a difference, I think. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the other thing, the other issues at play as well. There, there is probably sure. many factors. Sure, sure. Right? there's many, there's many factors, but there are, we, we know for a fact since 2001, the National Safety Board has, has done the studies and knows we need more truck parking. Now, the problem is, unless we designate it into a bill that says it only can be used for truck parking. So when we send motor fuel money back to the states, they're going to apply it towards new roads and new bridges and everything like that, but not necessarily towards new parking spaces. This would be money that would be directed specifically to make new parking spaces. How much money? The dollar amount, I'm trying to remember. I'd have to get back with you on that, to tell you the truth. Okay. But it's um, a lot. It's a lot. So what is the pushback? Is there is there a pushback? Is there well, anyone originally, think what's really wild is happen? there wasn't a lot of attention paid to it last year whenever the Democrats were in charge. But right towards the end of the year, the chairman all of a sudden had a couple of incidences uh, that was brought to his attention. He goes, oh, my gosh, boss is right. We need these trucks. You know, I mean, I'm kind of in the business, but he's, he's right. This is a real situation. We passed it at the end of last year over to the Senate, but they didn't get anything done with it before the end of session. That's why we're passing it, passed it early this year to have it in the Senate's hands. And what's the status of the bill now? Right now it's uh, it's in the markup uh, and, and that we sent uh, to the floor. We'll be sending it over shortly to the Senate. So what's the timeline right now? We're hoping that we can get it over to the Senate by the August break, or after the August break. Okay, so it could become law in August? It could become law. I don't expect the Senate to move that fast, but by next year, it could be law, yes. Early next year? I hope January? So. I hope January so. 2024? Yeah. If the Senate passes it? If the Senate passes it. And as of now, what's the status with the House? The House House has actually moved it through a markup in the House, where it, and it is on the floor. Okay, so, so it's being debated in the House. It needs to go to the Senate. And then if it's correct. approved by the Senate, then it could become law in January of next year. That's correct. Today, we went back to the site of that Greyhound bus crash and talked with a, a truck driver who said that he's been spending uh, just hundreds of dollars uh, in fines because he can't find parking. That's correct. And that's he has to actually break the law sometimes because he can't find parking. Right. Because that's what I was talking about with the electronic uh, log books. The electronic log books do not allow for common sense measures. For instance, if you are an hour away from your home and you run out of hours, rather than going to your home where it's safe and putting a truck up and give you a little extra time, if you do that, they're going to charge you. Your company is going to charge you. And if your company does not charge you, then the, the Department of Transportation will charge you with violations which costs the company. So the company enforces, all right? But it, it, it doesn't allow for common sense when you're out in a place that's unsafe. Um, we've had drivers killed, robbed, raped, um, all of these things because they're parking in unsafe places. This would help, but what would also needs to be up, we've been working on which is known as hours of service and allowing for a flexibility so that sensible, common sense can be applied to your driving, not just a computer saying, oh, you got to stop now. Yeah, but I'm in the middle of nowhere or I'm right where I can't park the truck legally. I'll have to drive another half hour. Will you drive another half hour? It's going to cost you money. That's just the way it is. Anything else you want to share with me about your legislation? No, you about know, your it is highly important for a lot of people in this Congress to understand that those of us that have been and spent our time and our lives in this these type industries, we're, we're not just making this up. We live it. And we've lived it every day. What's your reaction to the Greyhound bus crash? Just tragedy. I mean, it really is. Like you said, there, there, there are a lot of other factors in there. But if we have any factor that we can apply to make sure that it's not as, that there's a chance we can reduce the effects of, of that happening, then we need to do that. And also let me tell you this, that I, I did actually uh, uh, with, the, with the National uh, Safety Administration, the person that's actually dealing with this 
I've known her for many years. Uh, we had an immediate conversation within a day after it happening because she was going to the site. And um, she's keeping us abreast of all the investigations. There were cameras on board. The question is, was that also a bus that had, was the newer buses that are required of the seatbelt or were these not? And so all of those investigations are going on as well.